Siri, when will the world end? Well, Unix 32-bit time overflows on January 19th, 2038. Maybe then. Solemn events are before us and are yet to transpire into its full force. Trumpet after trumpet is to be sounded, and vial after vial are to be yet poured out one after another upon the inhabitants of the earth. This world is soon to be left by the angel of mercy, and the seven last plagues are to be poured out in due season. The bolts of God's wrath are soon to fall throughout the entire world, and when he shall begin to punish the transgressors thereof, there will be no time period of rest until the end of all things are complete. The four angels that are holding back the powers of this earth to the servants of our God are sealed in their foreheads. They are strictly at work. The nations of the world are eager for conflict, but they are held in check by the angels of God. When this restraining power is completely removed, there will be a time of trouble and anguish for all, a fiery trial and test that will enter the lives of those who are living in the last days. Deadly instruments of war have been invented for the sole purpose to enslave all the powers that be behind closed doors for those who are living upon the land. All who have not the spirit of truth will unite under the leadership of these satanic powers and agencies that exist in the world today but they are to be kept under control till the time shall come for the great battle of Armageddon. Soon the whole world will be involved in ruin. The angels of the Lord are now restraining the winds of strife that they may not blow upon the land until the world shall be warned of its coming doom, which many who have the truth are shrinking into fears of persecution and the perils to come. But the storm is gathering regardless, ready to burst upon the earth, and when God shall bid his angels loose the winds, there will be such a scene of strife as no pen can explain. The Lord's prophecies concerning the visitations of judgments upon Jerusalem is to have another fulfillment for the last days, as it will repeat as a most great event that this world has ever seen, of which that terrible desolation found in history was but a faint shadow of what is coming upon the earth, and most are sleeping in the comforts of this life, free from real persecution, which shall help them stand in the hour before us. In the fate of the chosen city of God, we may behold the doom of a world that has rejected God's mercy and has trampled upon his principles and his holy law. Satan is soon to plunge the inhabitants of the earth into one great final trouble and most are not prepared for what is coming. As the angels of God cease to hold in check the fierce winds of human passion, all the elements of strife will be let loose. The whole world will be involved in ruin more terrible than which came upon Jerusalem of old times. The Lord God is to execute judgment upon the gods of this world as upon the gods of Egypt in their time. With fire and flood and plagues and earthquakes, he will spoil the whole land as many worship these gods till this day. The one who has stood as an intercessor in heaven who hears all prayers and confession, who is represented with a rainbow about him, the symbol of grace and love, encircling his head, is soon to cease his work in the heavenly sanctuary and pour out his justice upon an unrepentant world.
Concerns growing tonight because the toads are multiplying and they can cause harm to young children and pets. News Channel 5's Ryan Hughes is live in Palm Beach Gardens with a story you'll see only on Fox. Ryan. And Michael, this problem all started a few days ago and these toads are still out in full force. Experts say that the weather is to blame and that these little guys are not going away anytime soon. The problem, the toads are highly toxic and tonight a local company is putting out an important warning. I just see um, a massive amount of toads or frogs just everywhere. Toxic toads swarming swimming pools, sidewalks in the street outside Jenny Quash's home. You can't even walk through the grass without stepping on one. They're covering people's driveways. Jenny and her son tiptoeing through their yard inside the Mirabella at Marisol Community in Palm Beach Gardens. The sudden outbreak started a few days ago. Take a look at the toads clogging this pool filter and the poisonous pests now fueling frustration. That when we all open our front door, there's, it's not a hundred. You're talking a thousand of these little baby frogs. Toad Busters, a toad removal company, says these are cane toads, also known as bufo toads, which secrete a toxic milky substance. With the warmer winter, and then we had a rain a couple, of, two or three weeks ago, and a torrential rain, that caused them to go into a breeding cycle. Mark Holiday, the lead technician with Toad Busters, says the babies are coming from the lake in the community, and they can be extremely dangerous to pets and children. If a pet was to ingest too many of them, even at that small size, it would cause a problem. Jenny contacted her homeowners association, but says she was told it's her responsibility to handle the problem. With her three kids on spring break, Jenny says her daughter is now scared to walk outside. Definitely no swimming in the pool and no playing outside and enjoying the outdoors. Just hoping that we can figure this out so we can put an end to it. And unfortunately, Toad Busters tells me there will be another influx like this in about 22 days when the next batch hatches. In the meantime, the company telling kids not to touch the toads and telling pet owners not to let your dogs lick or eat them. Dude, oh, did you see that? What? Yeah. Yeah, we saw it. Check it out. A large meteor was spotted blazing to, through the night sky near Tallahassee over the weekend. The National Weather Service says the fireball was picked up by a weather device used to track lightning and thunderstorms. The agency says they're still working to determine where the meteor may have landed, although it's possible it broke up in the atmosphere before making impact. Nearly two million people in Mozambique have been affected by Cyclone Idai. Despite not yet knowing the full extent of the destruction, we can confirm with surety that we are facing the biggest natural disaster that Mozambique has ever seen. Authorities have given up the search for survivors and are now trying to prevent an outbreak of cholera from spreading beyond the port city of Baira. Thousands of people are being treated for diarrhea and there are plans for mass vaccinations next week. Telephone poles snapped like toothpicks. Collapsed homes, vehicles overturned. Sunday night storm left a trail of destruction in the Bara and Parsa districts of southern Nepal. As well as the dead and injured, government ministers say at least 100,000 Nepalis are affected. On a home in Arizona, authorities showing up with a court order to remove a two-year-old with a high fever after the boy's doctor called child services. Officers knocking down the door, forcing their way in with guns drawn. Tonight, the family's three children are in the custody of their grandparents, and the parents are speaking out. Here's ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman. When police kicked down this door, their target wasn't a fugitive, but a feverish two-year-old. But hours earlier, Sarah Beck had taken her sick child to the clinic. The doctor advised her to go straight to the ER. Her two-year-old had a fever of 105. But Beck claimed her son, who had had no vaccines, had improved minutes later. He's acting normal. He's um, dancing with his sisters. And I take his temperature, and his temperature was 102. When the family didn't show up at the ER, their doctor called the Department of Child Safety. The police report states police first knocked, spoke with the father on the phone, and when he refused to comply, they moved in because the child had a potentially life-threatening fever and illness. Inside, authorities say the house was a mess, and police discovered the couple's daughters were sick also. 
One of the girls said she had thrown up in her bed, and in the parents' room, officers discovered a shotgun was lying next to the bed against the wall and was not locked or secured. Police and child services say that when this happened back in February, there was a present danger to the well-being of that two-year-old that required immediate medical attention. Now, the family and some lawmakers are saying they went too far. choice in all things. 